Hi guys, this is just going to be a quick decluttering video. I'm going to talk about uh, three perfumes that I um, now, or one I've already given away, the other two I'm actually going to swap, and I just thought I'd come on quickly and uh, review them and show them to you uh, before I, I um, pass them on, uh, and also tell you a little bit about why I'm getting rid of them. Okay, so I'll start with the one I already gave away. It's Honoré Delights. It's kind of a French and English combination name, Honoré Delights. It's a French house called um, from Ex Nihilo. Um, it, it was, um, I picked this up a few years ago. There was only a little left in the bottle. I loved it at first. It's pretty, it's like an irisy, powdery um, fragrance with a little of a gourmand touch. Uh, I don't think even vanilla is listed in this fragrance, but it's, for, to me, quite vanillic. Um, it's kind of one of those, the reason I'm getting rid of it, or I, I mean, I wanted to give it to my friend because I think she'll really like it. She's not that much into fragrance yet. And also to me, it's just a little bit too perfect. That sounds, might sound strange, but for me, there's nothing left to discover in it. it. I'm always reaching for something more interesting, something a little bit more challenging. So if you're kind of new to perfumery and you want to go maybe get something uh, you typically wear like perfumes that might be called clean or, you know, freshies and things like that and want to take one step into like the niche world and something maybe a little bit more challenging. This would be a perfect soft fragrance for you. I really recommend it, although I'm not going to keep it. Um, it's quite a pricey perfume house. I think like 50 mils. I paid uh, like $170 for it. A few years ago, I think like in, in euros, probably about 200 now, maybe 195. Um, but they use a lot of natural ingredients. I think that is is kind of their thing. Um, I find that their fragrances are quite subtle. They stay quite close to the skin. Um, the perfumer, I can't remember her name, but she's also made sweet morphine from the same house. Um, I, I really recommend this fragrance to go and go sniff it. Okay, so the other two that I'm going to swap. The reasons that I'm letting these go now that I, I got some interesting swap suggestions and I decided that it was time, but I have actually considered uh, letting them go uh, prior to that. And it's Remarkable People from Eta Libre de Range and uh, Caftan by YSL. They're both French perfumes. Um, and I'll, they're both kind of described as like spicy ambers, uh, but they're really, really different. I think they only have one note in common and that's labdanum. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's some citrus in the top of each one. This one has grapefruit and this one has bergamot and tangerine. Um, but this is um, has the unusual note of champagne um, together with uh, grapefruit and cardamom in the top, which creates a really like unique kind of opening. I just sprayed like one spray here of this one and of the other one on here. So I have them. I just sprayed like 10 minutes ago. Um, the opening is really, really unusual. And then it kind of quiets down a little bit and it has, the, the mid is really also unusual. It has black pepper, curry tree, and jasmine. And I don't find anything foodish about this, so don't let that curry note scare you off. Um, but there's definitely something in there that I like that's to me quite unfamiliar. And then it has sandalwood, Laura Knox, which I think is like a molecule type of note, and labdanum. Um, it's really hard to describe this fragrance. I know when I first sprayed this, um, I kind of picked it up casually last summer. Um, I got to buy it for under retail price. It was a tester bottle, so it came without the box, but it was full and it smells fine. Um, and um, I decided it was kind of like worth the risk because I hadn't really, you know, I hadn't worn it properly. Um, but the first thing I, I thought of when I smelled it was actually uh, the Ruthless Countess Dorotea from Penaligans which actually has the note of white wine. So maybe that is the similarity. And that one also has kind of an ambery type of base. I mean, labdanum is definitely like in all ambers. Um, I don't know. The reason I just, I never reach for it. Um, I like it on other people. I know I've had friends here that, you know, we would be going out and, you know, do you want to perfume yourselves? And they put this on and I thought it smells really good on them. Um, I just never kind of, I can't get myself to wear it for some reason. I don't know. So that's why I'm swapping it, and I'm going to get, instead, review will be coming up, Musk Ambergris from Affinissance, which is, I guess, quite a challenging fragrance. But I love ambergris, and it's supposed to have, like, truffle in it, too. Uh, and the seller, or the one who I'm swapping with, she was really honest and said, this is a weird perfume. <laughs> and I said, well, how about <laughs> how about this? Because this is also kind of a little bit strange. Um, I don't think that this is kind of an easy wear, although it's unusual. 
And I think maybe the ambergris is maybe not such an easy wear. I do not know yet. Uh, but I, I need something interesting for my nose. Actually, many describe this as kind of like an orange creamsicle or an orange spiced kind of champagne, and it's really sparkly. Many people find it sparkly in the opening. And I'll have to say, I do, I can totally get that, like a kind of a carbonated kind of feeling to it. I, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about selling this before, and then I've always like changed my mind because when I smell it, I think it smells really good, but then I never wear it. So it's, it's got to go. My, my perfumes need to be in rotation, and I'm sure that I, if um, I know the person who I'm selling or I'm swapping this with, and if I just feel some desperate need of it, she can maybe send me um, a decant or a sample of it, and we might meet in Stockholm. She's from another city in Sweden <clears throat> um, at our next meetup. She said she would come. Okay, so the other one, oh, I just wanted to mention one more thing about this, and that, that is that I found this really interesting that 24 people on Fragrantica find it similar to Val d'Afrique by Barreto. Uh, I don't agree at all, but I just thought I would mention that because that might give you some like information or some like guidance in you know deciding if you'd be willing to try this or not. Okay, so that one. And then this caftan, uh, I was gonna buy a 75 ml bottle, I'd made up my mind, and then when they got when I got there, they only had this bigger bottle in stock. So I haven't used all this. I've used it maybe three or four, maybe five times, maybe, not for sure. Um, I've decanted a whole bunch of it. Um, I, I really think it's beautiful, and it's really, really incense -y amber. Um, so on the, on the label, it says incense and benzoin. It's, those two are like the, the most prominent uh, notes in here. And it was created by Kellise Becker, who is like a master perfumer by now, I guess, because she's made... Um, J'adore, which is a you know, classic from Christian Dior. Uh, Carrière de Lancôme, which is not uh, around anymore, but it, which is a beautiful leather fragrance that I've tried. And also like a whole bunch from Killian, Love Don't Be Shy, um, Moonlight in Heaven, and Woman in Gold that I like so much. So I really think I like her work in general. I just find this one quite heavy. It's a little bit too, maybe a, the incense a little bit too churchy for my taste. It has a little bit of that wet stone kind of feeling. It's pretty, it's really loud, this perfume. It's it's really potent. And I mean, I, I, I put one spray on of each of these, but this one is projecting like crazy. This one is a little bit more, it kind of in the middle, it's a little bit mediocre uh, projection. Uh, this one is, I mean, it's hard to, 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 to wear. It's, it's just really loud. I, I remember wearing this on a winter walk last year and I thought then it was perfect. I was outside and I was all my clothes on, my hat. It was like one of the lots of snow. And it's just kind of a real cozy fragrance. I mean, it has like the incense notes are olibanum and styrax and it has benzoin, labdanum and musk. And in the top, some citruses and pink pepper. I totally get the pink pepper too. It's Yeah, it's quite dominant, the pink, pink pepper. Um, and, and guess what I'm getting instead? A really, really gorgeous perfume. And one of my absolute best friends is, we're doing the swap. Uh, um, my best, one of my best like perfume friends. Um, she, it's a Chypre de Palatin from MDCI New York. Perfumes, I think it's called. <laughs> MDCI, yeah. And it's, an, it's, a, it's a fragrance that was created in 2012. It came out. Uh, this is the original formula that I'm getting. I have a decant and I just, think this fragrance is unbelievable, a 10 out of 10, and I'm going to make a, a, a video on that shortly. Um, but next time I see her, we'll, we'll swap these, because she likes this a lot. Um, she already has a decant of this, but from me, and I have a decant from her, so, uh, but they're basically sitting in our closet just collecting dust, so I think I'm really happy that we found um, a way to make them rotate a little bit. These both actually came out in 2015. Um, yeah, that, that was... I don't know about this incense thing. I think I, I'm a little on the fence about incense. I like incense, but I think I like it combined with, you know, it has to be a little bit of a lighter kind of incense. I love like Sideris. I love um, from um, Maria Candida Gentile. I love, um, what else do I have? Um, this one, what was I thinking? Um, oh, I did, I was just about to say it and now I, now I kind of lost it. Well, I, I mean, I, I like incense. I just think that Ashoka, I was thinking about too. I, I only have a decant of that because it's so expensive, but that's a beautiful incense and fig kind of fragrance. Um, 
And I also like when they're when they're fairly light. I mean, Sideris is a little bit actually not far from Women in Gold. It has that really light, beautiful vanilla. Uh, and then there's just a little bit of incense in there where Women in Gold doesn't have that. That it's more like a chic, sophisticated female kind of more traditional fragrance. But um, I mean, I'm not, I haven't given up on incense in any way. I like it, but I sometimes I find these incensey heavy ones a little bit too heavy for me to wear. So I think this is, I'm just so happy that this will be in my friend uh, Clara's uh, closet instead of my own because it's just standing there and I don't think, I think it's sad to have things just standing around. Yeah, so those are my declutters for today. Uh, and I'm sorry if I've like recommended them earlier and now I'm selling them, but just too hard to wear. I still like them, but they're not, they're just standing there. So they've got to go. That was all for today.